Hi, and welcome back. So let's take a look at my biological age, and this marks the 79th month of my longevity experiment. And I'm going to use the blood test results that I had taken in November of 2025. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump in and take a look at my biological age. Let's quickly take a look at the supplements I was taking when I had this blood test done back in November. Nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN, 1.5 grams per day. Trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams per day. That's TNG. Trans resveratrol, 1 gram. I take that on a Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Those are the days that I don't do resistance training or weight training. Metformin, 1,000 milligrams or 1 gram. Two 500 milligram slow release capsules and i take those just before i have my main meal of the day vitamin d3 5000 international units per day 10000 on a monday and wednesday to keep myself well in the sufficient range vitamin k2 120 micrograms of the mk7 version then we've got magnesium i take 250 milligrams of the l3 and 8 version high molecular weight hyaluronic acid 400 milligrams per day fisetin 2.4 grams on the first, second and third of each month and quercetin the same 2.4 grams on the first, second and third of each month. And if you want to know why I do this periodic dosing and not every day, there's a link to that video in the description below. Baby aspirin, 81 milligrams per day. Cert6 activator, 800 milligrams per day. DIM, 600 milligrams a day, uh, 300 in the morning and 300 just before I go to bed. Glynac, that's glycine and NAC, 800 milligrams a day. Creatine, five grams a day. That's three months on and one month off. And I stopped taking it about, well, I, I stopped taking it a month before I have the blood test taken. Omega-3, 800 milligrams of EPA, 600 milligrams of DHA. And then berberine, I take 500 milligrams of berberine. And that's at the same time as I take my metformin. Now, people have always asked, as I've, I've, as I've had this longevity experiment going, but there's been more and more asking of late. They want to know what companies I actually get my supplements from. So in the next episode, if you like, or the ex next update that I do, I'll have this similar list and I will put next to it what company I actually get those supplements from. So that's it for my supplement stack. So let's take a look at my first biological age website. This is longevityadvantage.com and there's a link in the description below to this website. The last time I used this was July of 2025. If you want to use it, once you follow the link, you'll come here. You then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and you can see here that it's got 10 elements that you need to fill in. The top one is albumin and then those are the other nine. Um, those are not the, the numbers I put in, although the age is still 61. Now, the last time I did this, was in July of 2025. And you can see here, my chronological age then was 61 years and three months. My phenotypic age was 49 years and 0.71, which is phenotypic versus chronological minus 11.29. So 11 years and three months younger. That is very good indeed. My DNA methylation age back then was 49.06. My DNA methylation age versus my chronological age minus 12.99 so a reduction of 12 years and 11 months and three weeks and i said i was going to call that 13 years younger now my latest results are not exactly what i was looking for you can see here i was 61 and seven months old my phenotypic age has dropped to 57.70 and my phenotypic age versus my chronological age which is my birthday age minus 3.30 so now only three years and four months younger my DNA methylation age, you can see 56.70. My DNA methylation age versus my chronological age now has dropped to minus 4.30. So a reduction in four years, three months and three weeks. So that's it for those specific types of um, biological chronological age. But what is phenotypic age? Well, phenotypic age is a biological aging measure that estimates how old a person appears to be biologically based on their clinical biomarkers and not just their chronological age. It was developed by Dr. Morgan Levine and her team back in 2018 as part of a broader effort to better quantify biological aging and predict disease risk, mortality, and also functional decline. But why does this particular kind of aging matter? Firstly, it's mortality prediction 
it is highly predictive of all-cause mortality. It also gives an insight into how healthy or unhealthy your aging process is. And more importantly, it's responsive to intervention. So it can change with lifestyle improvements such as diet, exercise, and supplementation, making it useful for tracking your longevity inventions as I have. So why was there such a drastic drop in my biological age for this particular test? Now, if you watch my blood test video, you'll know that I suffered with the flu. Now, some are calling that uh, the super flu. It was doing the rounds at that time. Um, and I had it a few weeks before I did the blood test. Now, although I felt a lot better, I obviously wasn't fully over it. Now, I could have postponed that particular blood test, so my results would have been better. But that's not really the way um, I want to conduct this particular experiment. I was over the symptoms after about 10 days. Some people around here who get it are taking between three and four weeks to get over it. So although my biological age has dropped, um, my positive takeaway from this is that my immune system is working well. Also, hopefully, when my next blood test is taken in three months' time, I'll be feeling 100% better than I was before this particular blood test, and that will be reflected in my biological age. So let's move on to the second website I use. Um, now, I use this one because if you can't get a blood test, there's a way to gauge your epigenetic age. Uh, again, there's a link to this website in the description below. Uh, so since I use this site, lots of questions have changed and more questions have been added about a different range of lifestyle factors in an attempt to make it more accurate. So you can see here in July of 2025, when I was 61 and three months, it said I was 50, uh, 50, so that's 11 years younger. Nice, but again, not as accurate as the one that's, that measures your age from an actual blood test. I took this test again in November of 2025 when I was 61 and seven months. Here it reads 52 years of age, so around nine years younger. Again, great, but not too accurate in my humble opinion. So I'm now four months older than the last questionnaire, and my biological age has increased by two years. Um, as I say, this is a good way to test yourself if you can't get a blood test, uh, but not as accurate, in my humble opinion, as actually taking a blood test. So let's do a quick summary. At the time of taking this, my chronological age was 61 years and seven months. Months longevity advantage had my DNA methylation age or my biological age at 56.70 years. That's four years, three months and three weeks younger than I actually am. The less accurate biologicalage.com, so that's the questionnaire, that was the green website, that had me at 52, which is nine years younger. Now, I think we can all agree that the specific DNA methylation age test, that's a Horvath clock type test, is far more accurate. However, I avoid companies like epiage.com who test against less than 20 markers and look for companies that test against hundreds of thousands of markers for a far more accurate and a far more cost effective option. Let's take a look at my overall progress. This sheet shows the blue line. That's my chronological age, so my birthdays. And that will always creep up from left to right as the years roll on. The red line, that shows my DNA methylation age or my biological age. You can see here that since the last time, which is number 13, it's increased. So it's getting closer to my chronological age. But again, remember, I did uh, have the super flu. So hopefully the next time we have it taken, that red line will start to move down further away from the blue line. Now, this is a fictitious graph. This is what we're not looking for. You can see here, biological age is in red, starting below the calendar age or your birthdays. But then as the years roll on, it overtakes that. And this is actually the opposite of what we're looking for. This is not healthy aging at all. Now, if you want to try the DNA methylation age test, Look at Pro Health Longevity. They actually sell a couple of them. There's an affiliate link in the description below. And if you do choose to buy from them to test your biological age, please feel free to use the code MYNMN to get 15% off the biological age test. So actually 15% off anything that is on their website. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. So as of November 2025, I was biologically around four years four months younger not as good as the test previous to that which had been coming in at 11 years younger hopefully the next test will be closer to that because obviously the flu is now completely out of my system if you've had a blood test done and you've got the markers that are required have a look at doing the test on but on longevityadvantage.com 
you've got the markers, then you've got nothing to lose. If you don't have a blood test or you don't want to take a blood test, then maybe look at biologicalage.com. It's not going to be as accurate, but it's definitely going to be better than nothing. All I'll say is if you do use the website, you have to be 100% honest with your questions because bad data in, bad data out. You can cheat on biologicalage.com. You can't if you're entering your blood tests. Um, if you've taken one of these tests in the past, let me know what your biological age is and also let me know what the difference is with your chronological age.